I'm Dale Cox for 2 Egg TV, and we are up on top of Orange Hill in Washington County, Florida. If you're not familiar with Orange Hill, it's a remarkable elevation. It's kind of a broad plateau. It's on the horizon just south of Chipley, Florida. And we're here today to learn about one of the final attacks of the Creek War of 1836. What's remarkable about this attack is that it didn't happen until uh, six years after that war supposedly ended. The Creek War of 1836 started up in uh, Alabama and Georgia in 1836, and it continued to be fought here in Florida as late as 1844. Here at Orange Hill, uh, on August 31st, 1842, a party of Creek warriors attacked the home of Stephen Perkins. Now at the time, they thought that this particular band had been hiding east of the Apalachicola River in what is now the Apalachicola National Forest. In fact, they were living down around West Bay in what is now Bay County, Florida, down on the Gulf of Mexico, not far from Phillips Inlet. These creeks would come out occasionally to raid, uh, to secure supplies that they needed, uh, to find gunpowder and ammunition that they could use to hunt with, and they, they were just trying to survive. However, woe unto wow. any white family that they encountered on these raids, and in this case it was the Perkins family that lived somewhere here on Orange Hill. We don't know the exact site of the attack today, but we do know that when the Creeks attacked the Perkins homestead, both Mr. and Mrs. Perkins were killed. We know that two of the children were killed. We know that a third child was uh, badly injured, and at the time they didn't know whether the child would survive or not and the fourth child, a little boy, managed to escape and alert neighbors. Uh, a group of neighbors pursued these creeks. They couldn't come up with them, but a short time later, down near Hard Labor Creek in Holmes Valley, uh, they did find them. Uh, they confronted these creeks, and it really turned out to be just a handful of creek men against three or so you know, white men. Uh, over time, this was magnified into a large battle in which you know, over 100 Creek warriors were killed. There were probably no more than five or six actually involved at the time. Uh, the Creeks challenged the whites to man-to-man -to -man combat. And uh, the leader of this Creek group basically said, you know, send out your bravest warrior and I'll fight him. Uh, the whites responded by shooting him. Uh, the other Creeks, you know, fled into the forest. Uh, and that was, the, that was the end of that battle. Uh, there's also a legend here that uh, this particular warrior who was killed had a wife uh, who just was devastated by his loss and she hanged herself uh, from what is known as the Indian Oak in Chipley. We don't know if that story is true or not, but it's definitely part of the local legend and folklore about this incident. It's a tragic story, uh, but it's also a story that is an important part of our culture here in the Florida Panhandle. Uh, the U.S. Army eventually sent troops into the St. Andrew and West Bay and Phillips Inlet area to look for this uh, little band of Creek Indians. Uh, the Creeks eluded them again, although the soldiers did find you know, some of their camps and, and some little gardens or fields of corn they had planted. Uh, that was in 1844, two years after the attack here. Uh, the uh, Creeks once again escaped, and the Army never did come up with them. In fact, these, uh, these warriors and their families were able to successfully elude uh, being sent west on the Trail of Tears. Uh, their descendants still live in Washington and Bay counties to this day, uh, survivors of the Trail of Tears, uh, but people who took, uh, as one writer put it, another road to disappearance. Uh, atop Orange Hill, I'm Dale Cox for Two Egg TV.